In this video, we'll learn lighting and rendering an interior scene using GPU light mapper and high definition render pipeline or HDRP in Unity 2019.2. So let's begin. For this demo, I'm gonna use this free living room scene. I will give a link in the description from where you can download this 3D model. I have exported the scene from 3ds Max in FBX file format. Let's quickly import the FBX file in Unity. In the import settings, since I have also included textures and materials in FBX file, so we can extract them here. For that, click on extract texture, make a new folder called textures and click on select folder. Repeat the same process for the materials as well. Please note that if your 3D modeling software doesn't allow you to export texture with mesh file, then you need to create and apply all the materials again in Unity. One thing I also want to mention that if you are using 3ds Max, then you need to convert all the materials to standard material, otherwise Unity will not recognize them. Next, simply drag and drop the FBX file into the scene. As you can see now, we have all the materials with texture applied on it. You can select this show grid checkbox to hide the grid. Next, I'm gonna position my camera into the scene. For that, just adjust the view in the scene window and select your camera and press Ctrl Shift F. You can also use this by going game object and select this align with view. Press Ctrl S to save your scene. All right. Next, let's implement the high definition render pipeline. I guess you already know this if you have seen my previous video on HDRP. But if you are watching my videos for the first time, then go to package manager and from this drop down menu, choose show preview packages. And from this list, choose high definition render pipeline and wait, where is the install button? It used to be right here. Okay, I found it. It's here down in the bottom right corner. They have updated the UI in Unity 2019. Great. Click install and wait until the package is installing. Next, same like before, right click, create, rendering and make a HDRP asset. Next, go to edit, project setting, graphics and choose your HDRP asset here. And it will make everything pink. It's also giving us a warning about the gamma mode we are using. To fix it, again go to project setting, player and change the color space from gamma to linear. Okay, now let's fix our pinky problem. For that, go to edit, render pipeline and select upgrade project material to high definition materials. And voila, we are back to normal. Now you can see all of our material are using this HDRP lit shader, which is the base material in high definition render pipeline. I also want to mention that if you are using Unity 2019.1 or newer, then you can fix all the above problems in one go using this render pipeline wizard. I have explained you both ways. Alright, let's add some lighting in our scene. Now if I select the direction light, then you see that the whole scene has become dark because these glass panels are blocking the light in our room. So I hide this glass panel so that we can see some lighting in our scene. Next, first of all, right click, go to rendering and select scene setting. And now we have a nice procedural sky around our scene. But for this scene, I'm gonna use an HDRI image to illuminate our interior. Because HDRI images provide much better lighting and reflection in both interior and exterior environments. I have already downloaded a very nice HDRI from HDRI Heaven website. So let's import that as well. In the import setting, change the texture shape to cube map and just hit apply. To add this HDRI in our scene, go to scene setting and as you can see in Unity 2019 they have made lot of changes in HDRP which we are also gonna cover in this video. They have added this new ambient mode which provide a basic ambient light in our scene. We will change this later if we need to but for now just keep it static. Next change the sky type to HDRI sky and add a HDRI sky component. Enable all the option and choose your HDRI cube map here. Also in the fog type choose none unless you want a foggy look in your scene. Next to start baking lighting first in the lighting panel which by the way you can access from windows rendering light setting and first disable this auto generate lighting because uh, we're gonna manually generate the lighting. Next select your scene parent and from this drop down panel enable the contribute GI option. In the older version you can find this option by the name of light map static. In this new version they have changed it but to be honest I think that the light map static is much better name for this option. Anyway select the option and choose yes change the children. Also set all the object to reflection prop static. 
However, there are some objects in the scene which we don't want to be static. For instance, this window glass which is completely transparent and it will hardly receive any diffuse lighting. So I disable the both option for this object and also hide this object from our scene. Do the same thing for this railing glass object. Also we don't need this static fire texture image so disable this one also. Later we will add unity particles to simulate the fire effect. And now we are ready to bake the lighting. Go to lighting panel and turn off real time GI because after baking lighting we are not gonna move or rotate any light in our scene. In the light mapper, I choose progressive GPU which is as Unity says is 10 times faster than CPU which is really very great. But as you can see it is still in preview mode so it may crash your scene. So if you see any problem with this light mapper you can anytime switch back to progressive CPU which is much more stable. Next without changing any parameter just hit generate lighting button. Here you can see it is using 1.6 million texture or texture pixels which are basically used to store the lighting information for our scene and it took about 2 minutes to bake 3 direction light maps. But even after baking light maps our scene is still looking the same like before. So let's check whether it has baked any lighting or not. To check that in your scene view enable this baked light map mode. And here you can see we have definitely baked some lighting in our scene but it's very dull so we need to increase the intensity. So to do that. Go to scene setting and change the exposure to 2 and multiplier to 1. Again these are not fixed settings you can increase or decrease this value according to the lighting in our scene. Here I want to give you a little tip. What you can do or what I actually do is that while baking the lighting I increase the intensity to a higher value and once I bake the lighting I reduce the intensity back to normal. Okay. Next let's tweak our light map setting. First set the bounces to 4 so that we can get better global illumination in our scene. Right now the default light map resolution is pretty high which we can reduce while we are testing the light. You can check this resolution by going bake light map mode and enable the show light map resolution option. These small checkers represent our textures. The smaller the checkers the higher the resolution. For testing I am changing the resolution to 20. This will bake the light map more quickly. Next set the light map size to 2048 and disable the compress light map option and set the albedo boost to 5. This will basically increase the GI casted by all the object and generate the lighting again. Initially it will show a very long estimated time but don't worry it won't take that much long. So this time it has created 0.6 million textures and render time is also very less but still our scene is not looking very impressive. There are couple of reasons for that so let's fix them one by one. First I want to tell you that even though we are now using HDR image but we are still using GI from procedurally sky which we have already disabled. But why this is happening? I did this mistake intentionally because when I was working on this project I made this mistake and it took me a while to figure out what the problem is. And I think that you may have this kind of issue so it's better to have the solution already. Ok so if we go back to scene setting you can see down here in the static lighting script it is still using the procedurally sky. So change this to HDRI and generate lighting one more time. And this time you can see we are definitely getting some skylight in our scene. Right now don't worry about the quality. We will fix that in a minute when we bake our light map on higher settings. Ok. Next I am gonna add a reflection prop to capture the reflection inside the room. To add that right click go to light and select reflection probe. In the reflection prop setting check use influence volume and in the shape use box projection and increase the size of prop to cover the whole living room. Then click on bake to bake the reflection probe. Now you can see that our scene has become dark because now we are not getting those unwanted reflection from outer environment. Next I am gonna add some artificial lighting in our scene. Select this cove light object and go to its material option. In the emission setting choose use emission intensity and set the color to orange same as the base color and bump the intensity to 10. Enable the emission option and use baked global illumination and generate the light map again. And you see now we are getting some cool cove lighting around the ceiling. Next let's add one more light for the center lamp. For this light bulb I am using a point light. You can use a spotlight if you want but I found that by using point light I can get lighting inside this lamp shape also. Ok so I go to light and create a point light and place it under the light bulb. Change the mode to mix so that we can change the color and intensity later. For the color I use color temperature and I use a warm color for this light. Set the intensity to 125 and slightly decrease the radius. 
Next, click on this plus icon to see the advanced option and I turn off the effect specular option to hide the unwanted reflection on some objects. Next, enable the shadow map and set the resolution to 1024. And for this light bulb, apply the same cove light material. Let's also add a light in the fireplace to simulate the lighting coming from the fire, which we will add later. For that, I am going to use a tube light. You basically just create a point light and then change the type from point to tube. And let's bake the light map one more time. And now you can see that we are getting some good amount of lighting in our scene even though the quality is very low because we haven't increased the setting yet. And don't worry about this overexposed area, we will fix them in the post production. So right now you only focus on the lighting. Before moving further, I want to fix all the materials because no matter how great lighting you have, if your materials are not looking good, you will never get a high quality result in your scene. So let's start with the floor material. For the floor, I have already prepared all the necessary texture using Materialize software. If you don't know about Materialize, it's basically an awesome tool to quickly generate PBR texture for your materials. I have made a complete video about the Materialize which you can watch from the i button or from the link in the description. Okay. So now the floor is looking fine, let's fix other materials. For the wall, I am choosing a color close to white with little bit smoothness and using the same material for the ceiling. For this side wooden wall, I am gonna use blurry reflections. Let's also add some reflection on this painting. You see the reflection are looking very nice on this painting even though you should add a glass object in front of it. But for the performance reasons, you can just directly add reflection on your texture. And for this border, I am choosing a darker color. You see that when I fix the color multiplier for this sofa material, the fabric texture is now looking very dirty because of the low light map resolution. But don't worry about it, we will fix it in a minute. For this sofa, I am gonna use fabric texture from the Unity's measured material library, which by the way is really very cool. For this metal material, I have also prepared a mask map from the materialize software, so let's set up that also. Let's have some reflectivity in this wood material also. Right now we can't see reflection of this object onto this table surface because by default the screen space reflections are turned off in HDRP. I don't know why but I think there is a reason behind it. But don't worry you can turn this on later. So to enable that, go to your HDRP asset and in the reflection turn on screen space reflections. And now you can see that these objects are reflecting in this wood material. Even though it's not so perfect. To fix this, I will later add planar reflection to improvise these reflections. For this candle base, I am gonna use a brass kind of material. You see that we are looking through this flower base. To fix it, go to its material and enable double sided option. For the leaves, I am gonna use a subsurface scattering material. To use it, first I enable the double sided option, then simply change the material type from here to subsurface scattering. And you also need to assign a diffusion profile in order to see the subsurface scattering results. So let's quickly create one. Right click, create, rendering and choose diffusion profile. And then in your leaf material, choose your diffusion profile in this slot and adjust the parameters. You can always fine tune these materials once you have properly baked the light map to get the best quality results. And I'm also using subsurface scattering for this candle material. For this candle flames, I am using a flame texture with alpha in it and you can also use an animated texture to make the scene look more interesting and I am also using emission properties so that I can make them glow when we apply post processing. Next I am gonna use subsurface scattering for this curtain as well. This will give us a nice backlight effect if you use direct sunlight to light the interior. But since we are not using direction light for this scene, so this effect will not be so much visible. For this rug, I have also created normal and height map by using materialize software. To use height map, first we need to choose the pixel displacement and then apply the height map in this new height map slot and adjust the amplitude to get the desired displacement. This map is used to achieve fake depth in our material. And if you look at it from a distance, this will look like a real displacement. Let's also fix the railing and window glass material. For the window frame, I am using just a dark color with little bit specularity. For the glass, I am using a transparent surface type and in the diffuse color adjust the alpha value to control the transparency of the glass. And also increase the smoothness to get the reflections. Alright, I think now we have pretty much fixed all the materials in our scene and we are ready to bake the final light map. 
For the final light map, I increase the samples to a really high value and obviously it will take longer to bake but it will also provide you much better quality. I am also using the open image denoiser to reduce the noise because at this time the optics denoiser is only available in CPU mode. For this final bake, I bump the resolution to 40. You can decrease this resolution if it takes very long to bake. I am also using ambient occlusion to get better contact shadows and I keep the light map parameter to medium which is fine for this scene. If you have a high end PC, you can obviously use high but that will drastically increase your render time. And for some objects, I am increasing the scale in light map value to slightly higher to get better details and to reduce artifacts. I think we are all set and let's hit the generate lighting button and wait till it completes. One thing I want to tell you that this light map process is kind of buggy. So if you stuck at baking, then you may need to restart Unity in order to bake the light map again. And now our light map baking process is complete. The final lighting is looking very nice, even though there are still some noise left, which you can remove by using higher resolution. But for me, I am happy with the results. Let's also add a planar reflection on this coffee table to fix the reflections. To add that, right click, go to light and choose planar reflection. This will basically give you a dummy box object then increase the width and height of this box to cover the whole top part of the coffee table. And now you can clearly see a significant difference before and after applying this planar reflection. Okay. However, for some reasons, if the planar reflection does not work in your project, then you can use this screen space reflection override to fix the reflections. In the setting, just increase the number of rays until the jittering in the reflection is smoothed out. This is very common with planar reflections because whenever Unity release a new update, they always mess up with other features. Why Unity? Why you do this? Let's also import the fire prefab which I have created using Unity's particle effect pack. Just drag and drop this prefab into the scene and it will work just fine. Because I have exported this from my previous test project. Lastly, I want to add some post effects to further improve the visual quality of the scene. If you have seen my previous video on HDRP in 2019, then you may have already know that now you can directly add post effects in your scene setting. And hey. If you are enjoying this video so far, then please press the subscribe button and press the bell icon if you really want to help me to make more videos like this. Okay? Done? Let's continue. First, I'm gonna use tone mapping to generate a contrast in my scene and this time I'm using a custom tone mapping and manually adjusting the setting. Next, I choose lift gum again to get a sort of warm plus cool color tone in my scene. Next, to increase the brightness of the scene, I'm using indirect lighting controller. This is basically directly increase the brightness of the light map. Finally, I add glow to the bright part of the scene such as candlelight and cove light. To make the candles flame glow, you can increase its emission intensity which is very handy if you want to make a specific part of the scene to glow. And lastly, go to your camera and enable the temporal anti-aliasing which is now directly integrated in the camera. If you are using previous version of HDRP then please watch my last video about the new features of HDRP so that you can have a better understanding of the updated features and the changes they have done in the new version. Okay, that's enough for the lighting and rendering of this interior scene and we have definitely achieved quite a good result. You can further work more on post effects and lighting to get better and better results. It's up to you. It is basically an R&D process. If you have any issue with lighting and rendering, you can ask me in the comment section or join my discord server. I would be happy to help you. And if you really like this video then please support me on Patreon so that I can make more videos for you. It is basically a platform where you can donate some amount on monthly basis to support this channel and you can also cancel it anytime you want. So I hope to see some more Patreon support and I would also like to thank Dimidu for his continuous Patreon support. And finally thank you so much for watching this video. I hope this will definitely help you. See you in the next video. Bye bye.